The movie begins as a young boy named Lee excitedly runs to his family, who are waiting for him outside to celebrate his birthday. Before he can even make it to the table, he suddenly feels ill and begins struggling to breathe. He falls to the ground as he gasps for air, calling out to his dad, Paul. His vision begins to blur until he blacks out, and then he wakes up. It was all a dream, the same dream he's been having for years. He realizes he's still inside his decontamination bubble, the only place he can be safe. His mother Rose arrives, and promises him he will be cured in no time. Billy has a rare autoimmune disease that causes severe allergic reactions when he's exposed to contaminated air, water, or even dust. This forces him to stay in a decontaminated bubble, where he does everything, sleeping, washing, and brushing his teeth. They are currently at a hotel, where they are spending a day as a stopover, before proceeding on their journey to a secluded medical facility led by Dr. Isabella Horn. Since he's not allowed to get in contact with air outdoors, Billy suits up in his protective gear. As they approach their car, a group of bystanders outside the hotel make fun of Ali and start throwing firecrackers at them. The blast startles Ali, causing him to trip. His suit scrapes the ground, ripping it, hearing so much noise. And knowing his suit has been damaged, Ali panics and his skin starts to burn from allergies. His mom patches up the damage on his suit and calms him down so he can breathe normally. Rose tells him to make a wish. Afterward, the family climbs aboard the car and drives off to their destination. After hours worth of travel, they reach Dr. Isabella Horn's medical facility. It is a huge, ancestral house that has been transformed into a high-tech facility with a decontamination chamber to keep the place quarantined. Billy is anxious, and reluctantly proceeds when told he needs to enter first. Inside, they are greeted by Dr. Horn, along with her assistant nurses, Barbara and Marcella. Dr. Horn asks Billy to take off his suit, but the boy is still hesitant, knowing how contaminated air can severely affect him. His mother assures him there isn't any, but allows him to take things slowly. Dr. Horn then asks the nurses to fetch the luggage, while she ushers the family to their rooms. She explains that the treatment, called viral gene therapy, will last for three stages. The procedure will involve injecting an encoded virus into Ali's body in order to correct his defective genes that cause allergies. She adds that Ali will be sleeping in a separate room to follow their protocol. They arrive at Ali's room, where she shows them everything, including the shower, which he hasn't had in years. He assures Ali that everything will be fine, and that he should make himself comfortable, as the facility will be his temporary home. Rose encourages him to trust Dr. Horn, and eventually, he starts removing his gloves. Rose helps him unzip his helmet. For the first time in years, Ali is able to breathe without his protective gear and containment bubble. It has been so long since the mother and son have held each other, causing them to get emotional as Ali goes in for a tight embrace. Later, Ali wakes up in the middle of the night and hears a noise coming from his bedroom window. He approaches it and sees an insect hovering outside. Suddenly, he hears someone whisper, and a mist forms on the glass as if someone is breathing on it. Ali stares for a while, anticipating what's going to happen next. His breathing starts to grow heavy when an invisible force scrapes the mist, forming a handprint. He immediately runs to his parents' bedroom and asks if he can spend the night there. The next morning, Dr. Horn asks him about what happened. Billy explains, and Dr. Horn dismisses it as hallucinations, which can be the side effects of his medications. She mentions that her past patients also experience the same, and assures him it's completely normal. The first stage of the therapy is about to begin. Dr. Horn takes Billy into the operating room. The assistant nurses help have him strapped face down on the table. Billy explains that it began about four years ago when he began getting allergic to everything unless decontaminated. She then injects him with anesthesia and grabs a vial containing a modified virus, holding the vial up to his view. Dr. Horn explains that she's going to inject the modified virus into his marrow to repair the damaged gene inside his body. She asks Ali to count back from 100 and uses a bone punch to get a bone marrow sample. In the stainless chair, Ali sees a reflection of a ghost approaching him. He starts to panic and passes out. He wakes up seconds later only to find himself strapped upside down as he screams in pain from the burning sensation on his skin. Dr. Horn tells him it's part of the medication, and the burning means it's working. Billy tries to break free, but the straps hold him in place. Severe burn marks start to appear on his body as he screams, pleading to make it stop. He wakes up again, but this time, he's inside his room. After removing his dextrose, he starts walking out, but a sudden noise from the window stops him. He looks around, but sees nothing, so he breathes onto the window and marks his hand. He is startled when a pebble hits the glass. When he looks down, he sees a young girl gesturing for him to come down. Billy hurriedly goes downstairs. He soon finds the door leading to a room with huge glass windows, where he meets the girl named Haley on the other side of the glass window. She deduces that he's sick, implying that she knew other kids who stayed at the facility. Haley asks him about his favorite hobby, or what he's into. He pulls out his magic cards from his pocket and tells her he can do tricks with them. However, Haley already knows the trick and proceeds to show him how she can light a twig in a fire. Billy invites her to come inside, but Haley claims that Dr. Horn doesn't like her and there's an eerie feeling in the facility. She promises him that they will meet again. As Billy makes his way back to his room, he passes by a room with furniture covered in white cloth. When he shines the flashlight toward the room, he sees a ghost of a girl patient, but it immediately disappears. When he points his flashlight at the other end of the hallway, 
He sees the girl, now standing a few feet away from him. He starts running, while the ghost gets closer and closer as he shines his flashlight. In a panic, Billy trips, and when he turns around, a shadow appears behind the curtain, looking like it's approaching him. When the curtain opens, his father appears holding his IV pole, and orders him to put the drip back in his hand. Billy asks him where the ghost went, frantically trying to find her. After dinner, Illy reads a magic book in his room, trying to figure out how Haley lit the twig. Suddenly, his closet door slowly opens on its own, allowing him to see the curtain from the mirror. He sees how the curtain weirdly moves, as though someone is behind it. When he shines his flashlight at the bottom of the curtain, there are no feet or anything that would suggest someone is there. He approaches the curtain, tentatively asking who's behind it. When he pulls the curtain aside, he sees nothing. So, he decides to breathe on the window and write his name, Billy, onto it. The ghostly being responds by removing the first letter of his name, putting it on the end to spell the word, lie. Billy is so taken aback that he drops his flashlight, when he finally proves that there is indeed a ghost inside the facility. He begins walking backward until he hits the closet. When he turns around, he sees the same ghost of the girl standing near the window from the mirror. When he looks again, it's already gone. He turns his gaze back to the mirror, and there, behind him, is the ghost attempting to approach. But as he quickly turns around to confront the ghost, it vanishes into thin air. He lets out a gasp of fear when the ghost suddenly materializes in front of him, coming from inside the closet. Billy stumbles backward on the floor and starts crawling away, while frantically telling it to stop. A pair of hands grab his feet and pull him back as he screams. It's only his dad, though, trying to calm him down. Later, Ali has fallen asleep, and Dr. Horn tells Rose and Paul that Ali's been experiencing hallucinations due to his medications. Ali's condition will apparently be getting worse before it gets better. The next day, Ali is taken to the operating room again. This time, his head is secured in place, and Dr. Horn injects him with anesthesia again. His body begins to react to it, and the same burn-like marks start to appear on his skin. Billy's breathing gets heavier. He is in a state of panic, telling Dr. Horn he is hurt. A part of his head is shaved, and Dr. Horn starts drilling into his skull until he passes out. Outside, his parents are waiting for the update, with Rose eagerly praying to God. Paul asks if God can help them, and he doesn't believe he will. Dr. Horn arrives, telling them that Lee will be needing some rest. Later that night, the family is having dinner when Lee tells them he feels something is off with Dr. Horn, as he feels sicker than when they first arrived, and that he wishes to leave. Paul stands up and gives him two choices, leave and be sick forever, or stay and get better. Lee chooses the latter. After dinner, Lee stays in his room. He hears something hit the window, it's Haley, asking him to come and meet her. He is about to go, when he suddenly hears something coming from his bathroom. There, he sees a shadow on the shower curtain, but no one behind it. He turns off the shower and the faucet in the sink. He then clears the fog on the mirror so he can see himself, but he suddenly feels ill. When he touches his nose, blood stains his hand. The light starts flickering, until it completely shuts off. In the mirror, an image of another ghost, a boy this time, slowly approaches him from behind. He immediately clears the fog, convincing himself it's not real. He turns around, and a hand reaches out from behind the curtains. Ellie runs in fear and tries to open the door, but an invisible force prevents him from doing so. As the ghost approaches, Ellie hides inside his closet. The ghost starts banging on its doors, while Ellie screams for help. With a loud thud, the closet falls to the ground as Ellie pants, anticipating what's going to happen next. When the noise settles, Ellie comes out and sees that the mirror has been broken, and the word, lie, is repeatedly written on the door, as if every letter has been scraped with a sharp object. As he stares at the letters, the door opens and Rose, Paul, and Dr. Horn arrive. Billy tries to explain what happened, but they dismiss it as a side effect of his medications once again, with Dr. Horn asserting that none of her other patients have ever mentioned seeing ghosts. In frustration that nobody will believe his story, he yells at them before storming off. While he cries in his room, he hears the familiar sound of pebbles hitting his window. He meets with Haley downstairs again. He explains that he thinks the house is haunted because something bad happened there. Haley laughs but tells him that a previous patient, named Perry, also told her the same thing. She adds that the last time she saw Perry was before she underwent Procedure 3. The light starts flickering in the hallway, and Ellie tells Haley to wait while he goes to check. As he walks down the hallway, an invisible force pulls his shirt. When he passes by a glass wall, he sees that three ghosts are pulling him along. He tries fighting them while trying to run away, but to no avail. He is taken to the decontamination chamber, the only way out of the facility. The ghosts then leave. The decontamination chamber closes, and the door leading outside slowly opens. Billy screams at the top of his lungs as he tries to stop it. He slumps on the floor and covers his mouth with his shirt, knowing what's coming. Suddenly, Dr. Horn grabs him from the chamber and brings him back inside. She tries to calm him down as his parents come running downstairs, asking what happened. Dr. Horn explains there must be an electric circuit that causes the doors to malfunction, but Ellie accuses her of knowing about the ghost. When he mentions Perry, Dr. Horn's expression suddenly changes, but she maintains she doesn't know what he's talking about. Billy stands up and calls her a liar. Rose tries to calm him down, but Ali has had enough, and he smashes the nearby glass frame. When he sees the blood on his hand, he passes out. Later, Rose comes upon Paul and Dr. Horn talking about the last procedure, 
and Dr. Horn informs her she'll give him a pill to help him sleep before they start the third stage. Rose insists she gives it to him herself. Inside, Rose tries to comfort Ali that she believes him, despite being unsure if the ghosts are real. She gives him the pill and asks him to take it in front of her, which Ali does. She expresses her love for him as she gives him a hug. Just then, Ali notices the writing on the cabinet, which can also be interpreted as 317. After Rose leaves, Ali spits out the pill and then waits until Haley decides to show up. Ali meets with her again and tells her that he thinks the ghosts are not trying to hurt him, but instead, want to save him. He realizes that the ghosts tried to drag him out of the house. He also shows her the word lie, which also reads as 317 when turned upside down. Ali believes it's a code to a door on the medical wing where he can possibly find answers. Haley warns him he may get caught, but Ali assures her he'll wait until everyone is asleep. After waiting for hours, Ali grabs his flashlight and makes his way to the medical bay. He inputs the code into the lock, and the door opens. He steps through the door and ventures into the hallway, until he finds himself inside the operating room. There, he begins to search the drawers, in hopes of finding the answers to his question. Meanwhile, Rose asks Paul what he and Dr. Horn were talking about before she arrived earlier, and Paul explains that it was about the risks involved with the last procedure. Since Ali had a bad reaction to the previous one, he might not make it through. Rose is confused. She knows that Dr. Horn has cured every one of her patients. She realizes that Paul lied to her, and that Ali's life is in danger, so she starts packing their things, saying she'll leave with Ali. Paul gets angry and blames her for everything, accusing her of not facing the truth. Dr. Horn wakes up to the noise of their argument. She then passes by the room where Lee is currently going through the files of the previous patients. As he continues to investigate, his eyes fall upon a locked box. He picks the lock using paper clips. The lid opens, revealing a folder tucked away inside, which contains the information and pictures of all the patients, including himself. As he flips through the pages, his heart begins to race when he discovers the chilling pictures of the previous patients, showing that every one of them faced their untimely demise during the last procedure. He finally learns the dark secret of the facility and that Perry was indeed a patient, just as Haley told him. In fear and distress, Illy drops the glass on the table. Suddenly, the lights switch on, and one of the nurses enters the other room to check. Illy hides from her view, and when she enters the room, she finds the files on the table and the door to the hallway open. Illy hurries to his parents' room, calling out for his mom, but he finds no one. Meanwhile, Rose loads their suitcase into their car and attempts to go and find Illy, but Dr. Horn stops her. Dr. Horn convinces her to proceed with the last stage, and assures her she will do her best to help her son. Inside the facility, Illy enters his room, where he finds his dad waiting for him. He tries to convince his dad to leave, explaining that all of Dr. Horn's patients did not survive. However, his dad appears calm, as if not hearing what he's trying to say. Paul sits on the bed and has Illy sit beside him, telling him he is greatly loved, especially by his mom. Paul stares into his eyes and says he's sorry for everything, before embracing him. But Illy's relief is short-lived when Paul injects him with something. The door then springs open, revealing Dr. Horn and the nurses, together with Rose. The nurse forces Illy out of the room, while Illy begs his mom to stop Dr. Horn. He frantically tries to convince them, but they refuse to listen. On their way to the operating room, they see the car has been set on fire. Illy uses the distraction to flee until he manages to lock himself inside Dr. Horn's room. There, he sees an insect that appears to be guiding him near the shelf. He discovers a picture showing that Dr. Horn and the nurses are actually nuns. The insect flies near the wall which reveals a secret passage into an underground cavern. Ali makes his way down and finds an altar. Moments later, Rose, Paul, and Dr. Horn arrive. Dr. Horn locks him inside, before leaving with Rose and Paul. Ali begs for his parents to help him, as he struggles to breathe until he passes out. He wakes up and finds himself still inside the altar, but he also discovers he can breathe just fine. He calls out to his mom and dad, desperately asking them why they lied to him. To escape, he pretends to have lost consciousness and then hits his mom with the cross before sprinting out into the hallways with Paul, Dr. Horn, and the nurses in pursuit. He locks himself inside the glass room. As he tries breaking the glass, Haley appears, asking what's happening. Not long after, Paul manages to open the door and carries Ali away from Haley. Meanwhile, Rose regains consciousness and discovers the decomposing bodies of the previous patients. She takes a dagger and aims it at Dr. Horn as they are about to begin the last procedure. Rose tells Paul what she saw and asks him to help her save Ali. Paul agrees and Rose hands him the dagger, but he gives it to Dr. Horn, who promises to save Ali's soul. Rose begs, but Paul takes her away from Ali as Dr. Horn prepares for the procedure. Instead of surgery equipment, Dr. Horn reaches out for a Bible and holy water. She's going to perform an exorcism on him. She chants a prayer, imploring the aid of Saint Michael to help them. She then uses the holy water on Ali, whose skin begins to sizzle the moment the holy water touches it. As he screams, the lights start flickering, and sparks fly. Dr. Horn takes the dagger, chanting a prayer that the dagger can help purify Ali's soul. She lifts the dagger over her head and stabs Ali, but the dagger stops just before it pierces his heart. Ali controls the dagger with his mind, pointing it toward Dr. Horn's body. He then has Dr. Horn stab herself, causing her to stumble onto the floor. The nurses come to her aid. Ali then uses his powers to burn his restraints, allowing him to break free. 
He steps down the operating table and screams, which sends all the equipment toward the wall. Paul is knocked unconscious by one of the flying chairs. Ali then slowly approaches the nurses and Dr. Horn, who immediately run for the exit in fear of him. They try to open the door. However, their efforts prove futile as Ali forcefully stops them, lifting them into the air in the form of an upside-down cross before turning to his mother, asking her what they have been doing to him. Rose pleads with him to let Dr. Horn and the nurses go, but Ali refuses to acknowledge her plea. He then has them float around while he continues to ask Rose what they put inside of him. Rose reveals that the injections Dr. Horn gave him were not medications, but doses of holy water and Tanny's roots, a herb that suppresses his powers while the doctor tries to work on his genes. Ali then asks what he is, and Rose extols that he's their son. He accuses her of lying as he burns the bodies of Dr. Horn and the nurses surrounding them. Ali then asks about his father. Rose only admits that she prayed every day for a son, and Ali screams, demanding to know to whom she prayed. When Rose cannot answer him immediately, he loses his patience and screeches, knocking the burned Dr. Horn and the nurses into the wall. Just then, Paul slowly regains consciousness. Ali asks once again. And Rose explains that God did not hear her prayers, so she turned to the devil, who granted him as her son. The devil promised Rose that Ali would not turn out like him, but Rose finally accepts that she has been lied to, as the devil always does. As Ali approaches his mother, Paul sneaks up on him with a dagger, but Rose alerts him, so he senses Paul's presence. He stops him, and Paul struggles to break free until Ali has his face explode, instantly snuffing the life out of him. Ali turns his attention back to Rose, who is still explaining how she wanted him so desperately. Rose begs for his forgiveness which he acknowledges. He snatches the cross from her neck and throws it away, before making his way out of the room. Embracing his true identity as the son of the devil, Ali walks toward the exit, leaving fire with every step he makes, burning the entire facility. He opens the door and takes a deep breath of the air outside, which he was not able to do before. Rose appears behind him with a sweater. Ali turns angrily to her, but he suddenly hears a familiar voice. He sees Haley standing near a car. She reveals that she, Ali, and the other patients are half-siblings, all spawns of the devil. She offers to take him to their father, and Rose gives Ali the sweater she's carrying. Haley orders Rose to dry. Inside the car, Rose begins to have a panic attack, and Ali calms her down the same way she calmed him before. Rose eventually settles down and smiles, as she drives away from the facility knowing her son is alive.